Welcome to an entry in our exclusive Three Steps to Gladiator series. We built these guides from the ground up to help players go from zero to Gladiator, even on a spec that they've never played before. Step 1 covers building your character and is essentially everything you need to get started once you hit level 120 on your class of choice. Step 2 builds upon that by preparing you for two of the most important skills to have in Arena. Finally, Step 3 walks you through how to get the best results when entering the Arena. Now, we're excited to announce that throughout December, we'll be bringing you daily releases on the second step in this series for all of the specs that you see on screen right now. So, if you're looking to kickstart your climb to Gladiator on any of these popular specs, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell to be notified the moment your guide goes live. And head on over to skillcap.com wow if you're interested in checking out the rest of the series along with hundreds of other exclusive BFA guides. Alright, let's get into today's Step 2 release. Enjoy! Hello everyone, and welcome to Step 2 of 3 Steps to Gladiator, Arms Warrior Edition. This step will involve preparing for PvP, going over how to deal maximum damage in your arena games, as well as making the most of your crowd control. Firstly, it's important to know your passive damage prioritization, as well as how to burst in order to deal increased pressure in situations where you need to. Your passive damage will be a prioritization that looks something like this. Number 1. Slam with the Crushing Assault proc. Number 2. Execute. Number 3. Mortal Strike. Number 4. Overpower. Number 5. Rend. And number 6. Slam without the Crushing Assault proc. For burst damage, you want to have Avatar, Warbreaker, or even both to deal great burst damage. You also want to make sure you are in battle stance as long as it's not too risky and you're prone to dying. Doing single target burst, you'll want to stick to the normal rotation previously mentioned. However, when dealing with multi-target burst, you want to use Bladestorm during the majority of this, followed by sweeping strikes and then continuing your single target damage rotation. Your Sweeping Strikes copies every single target in damage ability you can do to another target but at less effect. This means it will copy your Mortar Strike, Rend, Sharpen Blade, and even Hamstring effects to nearby targets. Although abilities that AoE such as Blades from a Whirlwind will give no benefit to Sweeping Strikes, which is why you want to separate these abilities. So as arms, there's quite a few neat tricks you can perform with some of your abilities that can change a scenario, helping you to live in situations that may have killed you, or being able to create great offensive scenarios that may not have been possible otherwise. Bladestorm can be used for outplay maneuvers in order to immune incoming CC on yourself, allowing you to play offensively or defensively. It can be used to immune crowd control effects such as Mortal Coil, Fears, Polymorphs, or even Stuns. Bladestorm and Crowd Control allows you to keep playing offensively or simply not be a kill target as you are no longer locked down in any crowd control. You could also immune kidney shots, bash or other melee abilities with Die by the Sword when predicting big offensive goes on yourself or want to immune the CC in order to land a kill. Doing this will be a lot riskier as it's your biggest offensive cooldown, but it could pay off if you land a kill from it. This is why it's usually used defensively in order to deflect damage or parry stun effects in order to have a better time surviving. Note that when Die by the Sword is activated, that you face the enemy melee as you won't be able to parry attacks behind you. Now, when it comes to crowd control, ARMS has quite a few unique abilities that may not be in itself crowd control, but can be used to reduce it or limit your opponent's playstyles in a certain way. The abilities that you can use to CC effectively in the arenas are Stormbolt, Intimidating Shout, Sharpen Blade, Disarm, War Banner, and Jewel. Stormbolt is a ranged stun that can be great for offensive or defensive pressure depending on the comp you play or play against. You could use it on kill targets either during swaps or when you have crowd control on enemy healers, allowing you to go into battle stance or pop offensive cooldowns to try and burst your target as much as possible. When using it defensively, you'll basically want to stop big offensive cooldowns from the enemy team, dealing too much damage that would otherwise overwhelm you. You could also use it to stop important casts such as Polymorph or Fear on your healers if your team feels like the crowd control chain on your healer needs to be stopped more. Having Intimidating Shout can be an excellent tool for turning the tides in your team. 
You can simply use it on cooldown against enemy healers, who won't be able to have Trinket every time Fear is ready, in order to create a ton of pressure on targets that can't kite you much. Fear is often a very powerful defensive spell too. Being able to fear multiple people at the right time during an enemy team's offensive go can easily be the difference between living or dying during the play. Sharpen Blade can essentially be another crowd control as you reduce the enemy's healing input on that target by a huge amount. This will be great during certain healing cooldowns such as Iron Bark or at the end of a Mistweaver's Cocoon, reducing the amount of healing they receive from said spells by a lot that would otherwise easily sustain the enemy's health pool. When playing Warrior Mage specifically, it can be a great form of chain crowd control, simply when you've run out of crowd control on the enemy healer, or if the enemy team stopped additional crowd control, you could use Sharpen Blade on their target to make it difficult for the enemy team to deal with. Disarm will mainly be used defensively in order to negate melee DPS from using certain crowd control or damaging abilities. This will be useful against all melee apart from Windwalkers and Ferals. Simply disarming the target when they have offensive cooldowns, or when your teammates are stunned and vulnerable, is the best way to use this ability in order to make their offensive pressure goes easier to deal with. You could also use this offensively against warriors or death knights, denying them of die by the sword or death strikes, in order to try and get a swift kill on them. Once again though, you'll probably use this mainly for defensive reasons, but it can be nice if you know using it offensively could guarantee a kill or big defensive cooldown. War Banner is another fun tool to play with and can be excellent for reducing CC, mainly on your healer. Putting it down preemptively before your healer gets in crowd control will reduce whichever crowd control by half, making it harder for your opponents as they would have to kill in a much smaller window. When using War Banner, you want to be careful as it has some delay time when using it, as well as quite a short range for catching the crowd control. So make sure you use it at a perfect timing in order to make good use of this PV talent, as well as being in range. Jewel is another excellent defensive tool that doesn't act as a crowd control, but it can be used to reduce damage by a ton on your partners when they are being gunned down. Using it on offensive cooldowns or during goes where your partner is vulnerable, especially to one type of DPS predominantly, will make Jewel the ideal answer to this. Make sure to use it early during the cooldowns before they get off too much burst, just like any other damage reduction cooldown effects. The way in which you'll want to use these spells will also depend on how you will beat the opposition with the current comp you're playing. This can involve and change over time and usually have a balance of defensive and offensive play, which may require your use of the abilities mentioned in a different way. For example, against other melee cleaves as TSG, you may warrant your Stormbolt to be used aggressively in order to pile on pressure, whereas against caster cleaves you may just want to use it on another caster in order to dampen them. So bear in mind how you use your abilities in certain matchups, and if needing to live better, you'll probably want to use your abilities more defensively in order to live. However, if needing an earlier win condition where you feel like you can't out dampen the opposition, you'll need to think about how to play better aggressively to force kills against the enemy team. Well, that's step 2 of 3 steps to Gladiator as an arms warrior. Hope this helped and make sure to watch the final and third step too. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next guide.